Hello once again. Welcome to seven point four conditional probability and independence. Let's get to it. Conditional probability: the probability that one event happens given that another event is known to have happened. Oh boy! Hold on. Let me zoom in a bit here. All right. All right. So, like, uh, well, let me finish reading this. The conditional probability that that event B happens given that event ha A happened is denoted as probability of B given a so it's like a little line b given a so uh we'll see that but like an example is what's the probability of choosing somebody um who is happy given that they were a female right so it's like you already have narrowed down the population when i say given that this has happened i've narrowed down the total sum from all to well whatever that specific event was like in this case female so if I say the probability of someone being happy given they're female, well, now the probability is not all people. The probability is, total is only females. So it's like how many people are happy out of the total females, right? That's what this is. So it sort of, like I said, narrows it down. Uh, formula for conditional probability here, then you can see the, the note. So this would be probability of A given B is how you would read this one. It's probability of A given B. It's probability of A and B out of all of probability of B. So also known as, you know, this probability of A and B out of all the probability of B. So both events occur uh, over the given event occurs. You'll see, it'll make more sense when we get to some examples. I know it's a bunch of gibberish right now. If knowing whether or not, independent events, if knowing whether or not one event has occurred does not change the probability that the other event occurred, that the other event will happen rather, in other words, event A uh, and B are independent if, this is an interesting take on this, so very important rule here. If the probability of A given B is equal to the probability of A given not B equals the probability of A, or vice versa, the same way with B, then they're independent. You'll see what I mean. <laughs> it's like I said, it's a bunch of notation. We'll talk about it. It makes more sense when we have some context, right? So let's get to some examples. And, and we'll try to make sense of what all that meant. In the Northeastern United States, the summer can be particularly difficult for allergy sufferers. Among other questions, the census at school survey asks students their favorite season and whether they have allergies. The two-way table below summarizes the responses of 426 high school students randomly selected from all, from among all those in the northeastern U.S. who answered the survey. So we have a uh, favorite season, fall, spring, summer, winter, and then we have whether they have allergies as well uh, in those seasons. So yes or no, they have allergies in the fall, allergies in the spring, summer, winter, etc. All right. So suppose we randomly select one of these 426 students. Define events A as has allergy and S favorite season is summer and F favorite season is fall. So just so that we know what we're talking about. So probability of S given A. Describe this probability in words. So this is the probability of um, someone's favorite summer, some, someone's favorite season, someone's favorite season is summer given they have allergies. So in other words, we are saying that this person is going to have allergies what are the odds that, that person likes summer the most, right? So it's basically like this. We know the person has allergies. So I'm saying, hey, we're focusing on the 189 people here because all these people have allergies. So out of that 189 people, how many of them like summer? So if we were actually going to solve this, which I think, uh, I don't know if we, yeah, we, we can, uh, it would be 71 out of 189. So the probability of summer given allergies equals probability of summer and allergies 
over probability of allergies, which remember, probability of summer and allergies, summer and allergies is 71, right? Out of uh, probability of allergies, allergies, remember, is 189. which gets us about 0 0.376 as the probability of that exactly. There we go. So hopefully that made a little bit of sense, but we'll keep going. Given that the chosen person did not choose fall, what's the probability that this person has allergies? Write your answer as a probability statement using correct notation for the events. So. It says, given that the chosen person did not choose fall. So the probability someone given not choose fall. So fall complement. What is the probability they have allergies? So allergies given that they don't like fall. Does that make sense? Has allergies um, given favorite season is not fall. So again, probability that they have allergies given does not like fall, right? So if we look at this probability of allergies and doesn't like fall, right? Out of probability of doesn't like fall. So again, I'm using this formula. Let me go back, right? Just to tell you why I'm doing this. I'm using this formula right here, right? For A given B, uh, the top part is going to be the combination A and B over the B part. B part is the second part, the given part, right? So the probability of both over the probability of the second. So if we look down, that's what I'm doing. I'm doing the probability of both over the probability of the second, right? Oops, I mean to erase that, right? So that's the formula I'm using. So now let's just go find the numbers. A and not fall. So allergies and doesn't like fall, that's gonna be these folks right here, right? They all have allergies and they all don't like fall, right? Keep that in mind, has allergies and doesn't like fall. They like some other one. So 47, 71, and 23. Um, Let's add those up real quick. Oops. 47, 71, and 23. Um, out of, hold on, make that look more like a four. Out of, probably they don't like fall. So if they don't like fall, this is the total number of people that don't like fall, right? Spring, summer, winter totals. So 82, 173 and 52. That's how many people in total don't like fall. 82. So this formula kind of helps if you know the formula to, to, to find the points you need. So 173 and 52. So if we do the, the numbers here, we add these all up, we get 141 on top. And on the bottom, we get 307. So 141 out of 307, which is about 0.4. Five, nine. So there you go. So use the formula kind of helps here. So this is the probability that somebody has allergies given that they don't like fall. So out of everybody who doesn't like fall, that's the percentage of people who have allergies. Does that make sense? Hopefully. All right, let's go to some uh, more examples. In one large city, 40% of all households own a dog. 32% own a cat and 18% own both. We saw this one in the previous uh, set of notes, right? We even made this Venn diagram. You can see it again here. Suppose we randomly select a household and record which type of pet is owned by that household. And here's a Venn diagram showing the relevant events and probabilities. Like I said, we had made this one in the last uh, section, 7.3. What's the probability that a randomly selected resident who owns a cat also owns a dog? So this is the probability of owns dog given they own a cat. 
make sure you understand that right right sometimes the way they say it isn't the way we are writing it and at least the order the structure of it sounds different right but it's not probability that a randomly selected resident who owns a cat right we already know going into it that they own a cat so it's given that they own a cat of those people how many of them own a dog which is why i've written it this way probably who owns a dog given that they own a cat okay hopefully you're on board with that this should be um the population we're looking out out like the population that we're looking into and then this is how many of that population so how many people who own a cat also own a dog now again if i'm going to use the formula here um, I'm going to do probability of dog and cat out of probability of cat, right? The uh, first and second combined divided by the probability of the second. So dog and cat is, as you know, 0.18 because that's the center. Out of probability of owning a cat in general, owning a cat in general, remember, is 0.32 because you've got to combine these. This is all of cat, so 0.32. 0.32. So of the people who own a cat, 18 out of 32, that is 0 0.5625. 0 0.5625 is the probability amount there. There you go. So basically about 56% of people who own a cat also own a dog. Does that make sense? 56% of people who own a cat also own a dog. All right. And then one more. Is there a relationship between favorite season and having allergies? Summer is a difficult season for allergy sufferers in the northeastern United States. Data on favorite season of the year and allergies were obtained from a random sample of 426 students. This sounds familiar, doesn't it? Uh, from the Northeastern U.S. who responded to the census at school survey. Suppose we choose one of the students in the sample at random. Are the event's favorite season is summer and has allergies independent? All right. So the independence thing can really throw us through a loop. So let me get, like, you know, crack my knuckles here. Let's get a little ready. So get ready to roll. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to find the probability the someone's favorite season of summer given they have allergies and then find the probability of someone's favorite season of summer given they, they don't have allergies and see if these are equal right i'll explain more as i move on later but let's start with that i want to go with the probability someone favorite season of summer right given they have allergies All right, so let's start with that. Now, summer and allergies. Oh, come on. Oh my gosh. Oh boy. Oh, it's really freaking out now. Summer and allergies over allergies. So summer and allergies. Let's go slow. <laughs> let's go slow. Summer and allergies is 71. Out of the total number who have allergies, total number of allergies is 189. So 71 out of 189. We, we actually already did this one earlier, but we're doing it again. Uh, this comes out to, don't forget, 0 0.376. Yep. Same number we had before. All right. Now I'm going to find the probability someone's favorite season this summer who doesn't have allergies, given that they have no allergies. Now, here's the reason for this. If the probability that they have, like summer, given they have allergies, and the probability that like summer, given that they don't have allergies, is the same, the idea here is that, well, it doesn't matter if they have allergies or not. The whether they like summer is the same. So basically, you're saying that it doesn't depend on whether they have allergies to, to know if they like summer. It's like saying that summer, liking summer, has no is not impacted by whether you have allergies or not. So independent events, remember, are defined as events that aren't associated with one another, that these two events are mutually exclusive in a way, that one is not impacting the next. So 
the idea is what we're trying to do here is see if having allergies impacts someone's like for summer. And if these probabilities end up being the same, then the answer to that is no. Allergies doesn't impact their like of, of summer. But if the percentages here are different, then that means allergies does impact how much they like summer, which means if allergies does affect how much they like summer, then they are not independent because it's affecting the other one, right? Allergies is affecting how much someone likes summer. So again, independent would means that they have nothing to do with one another, but if they're not independent, then they do have something to do with one another. And that's what we're looking for in these numbers. So summer and no allergies, let's get back to it. Summer and no allergies over probability of no allergies. A complement, remember, AC for, for no allergies. So no allergies, remember the total there is 237. Summer and no allergies is 102. So 102 out of 237. Now 102 out of 237 is 0.430. Now notice these probability amounts are not equal. If they are not equal, that means that allergies affects how much they like summer, right? If they were equal, then it wouldn't matter if they had allergies or not, the probability of summer stays the same. But because they're not equal, we know that having allergies or not having allergies affects whether they like summer. So conclusion, because these probabilities, because these probabilities, oh my gosh, is that really how long it is? Probabilities, yeah, it really is. Okay, it's a very long word are not equal, I'm trying to do this without the screen spazzing out, the event's favorite season is summer and how has allergies are not independent. The event's fave season is summer and as allergies are not independent. So remember, if you ever have to, if you're ever being asked this question, this is what you're doing. You're gonna find these two probabilities and see if they're equal, long story short. So do the math, find the two probabilities, if they're equal, then they're independent, which is good. But if they're not equal, then they are not independent. And that's what this rule is saying up here, right? If they're equal, then they are independent. But if they are not equal, they are not independent. All right. So very nice. Um, that's it, I think, basically for 7.4. So I'll see you guys. Uh, for the next one's going to be the quiz. So let's get ready for the quiz, and then we'll jump into 7.5. I'll see you next time. Bye for now.